Next on Down the Highway, I'm talking to punk rock legend Keith Morris. My name is Ian Harrower, and music has been a part of my life ever since I can remember. I cut hair to make ends meet, and I'm looking for a change. So I'm taking my vintage Triumph motorcycle, and I'm leaving my job, my home, and my girl to take a journey across the U.S. to explore music. So follow me through big cities and small towns of all kinds, talking, listening, and learning about the music that defines and tells the stories of the people in the city they live in. So come with me, down the highway. I'm making my way over to talk with punk rock icon Keith Morris. Keith was the frontman for legendary punk bands Black Flag and the Circle Jerks. Keith is actively fronting his new band called Off. I can't wait to talk with Keith about the history, present, and future of his music career and see if he can define the LA sound for me. Oh boy. All well, right. I guess we're going to start at the beginning, aren't we? We're going to start at the beginning. Let, let me tell everybody we're with Keith Morris. Punk rock legend. In his own mind. In, yeah. In my <laughs> mind, too. Nobody else, it's just me and a, you. A legend amongst six other people. Yeah. Well, I think, I think a couple people know about the band Black Flag that you sang in. I think maybe three you or four. That singing? Well, that you fronted. <laughs> and three or four other people may know about the Circle Jerks, the other band that you, you fronted for a little while. Um, so for those, <laughs> those of us out there who don't know about either one of those bands, why don't you enlighten us? Tell us about those bands and those times. Well, once upon a time, there was the punk rock prince. <laughs> yeah. Do you have white um, or black I was living in Hermosa Beach. Uh, the, the music scene, the live music scene was beyond frustrating because there really was no live music scene. Sure. Uh, all the bands were top 40 bands covering like doing really bad versions of Led Zeppelin or uh, Heart or Doobie Brothers or you know all of that fun stuff. What year and I, I don't have anything against any of those bands because they all have their time and place. They all have their influential moments. And the first Led Zeppelin album is one of my f favorite albums of all time. So I'm not dissing on Led Zeppelin. I'm just dissing on the uh, musical quality uh, that was happening in Hermosa Beach. This would have been like mid 70s. Okay. And we, we just, we, we got fed up with having to look for anything original. And occasionally if something original did happen, it was really cool, it was really special. Sure. It's not, not like it is nowadays where you gotta like, you gotta listen to like 10,000 bands to find two or three bands that are like really ultra special. Right. Back then, there was, it was just a big desert and occasionally something would happen that was really bitching. But sure. um, we were just a bunch of frustrated guys and you know, we were always the guys that were picked last in PE. Everybody picked on us. We were the nerds, we were the geeks. Tried to be cool, you know, tried to, tried to be cool by hanging out with all the cool people. And um, I was working in a record store part time, working for my dad, and uh, through Greg Ginn's younger sister Erica, I developed a friendship with Greg because she would bring him along with her to the record store where I was working part time. And Greg was the guitar player. Greg had, Greg had just, he was strumming around on the guitar, trying to figure things out, you know, trying to trying to figure out his influences and everything like that. So we just, we struck up a conversation and that was basically where Black Flag came from. 
and uh, I was in Black Flag. I think I was in Black Flag for about three years. Okay. How did that segue into the Circle Jerks? Well, what was happening was uh, everybody was pretty much hanging out at a place called the church down in Hermosa Beach. Okay. Uh, the guys in Red Cross were uh, using Ron Reyes's basement living space as a rehearsal space, and they'd auditioned uh, Lucky. When, when, when Ron quit Red Cross, they needed to replace Ron. And so they auditioned Lucky. I remember this was on a Saturday. They auditioned Lucky. The McDonald brothers didn't like Lucky because he had North drums, which were like these futuristic. Oh, the ones that bend out. Return to forever. <laughs> yeah. um, I know, you know exactly which Tony ones you're talking Williams about. Tony Williams Lifetime, you know, <laughs> Chick Corea kind of thing. Right. You know. <laughs> <laughs> and that was for them, you know, being fans of Kiss and New York Dolls, that was a real put off. And seems like if you're a fan of Kiss, that would make sense, those drums. But New York Dolls, not so much. I don't know, just a, just well, a footnote. But, but that's also two <laughs> different worlds. Even though, they both wore, even though they both wore platforms and they both wore makeup, right. two, two different worlds. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but um, they, were, they were put off by Lucky. They didn't like his playing because Lucky is based in big band swing jazz, you know, school orchestra, um, Stan Kenton. Buddy Which is all Rich. great stuff, but for, I mean, for no, punk. No, that's all fantastic. And any, any great drummer should be listening to that kind of stuff anyway. Sure. Um, but they were put off by that. Um, so it was obvious that Lucky wasn't go going to be a part of Red Cross. Greg had become fed up with the brothers because they didn't want to rehearse. They, they wanted to party. They wanted to hang out in f front of the Starwood and hang out in front of the Whiskey A Go Go. Okay. I mean, they're younger guys. That's what, you know, they, the, the kids want to be part of the scene. Sure. Which is totally cool. Nothing wrong with that. And <clears throat> Greg was fed up with that. When I say Greg, I mean Greg Hudson. I don't mean Greg Ginn. Right. You know. Greg has uh, news. I, I spend too much time. I've I've spent too much time around guitar players named Greg. Yeah, in they my get confused. Lifetime. Well, let's let everybody know. Greg Hetson is also known for being one of the guitar players in Bad Religion, as well. Just want to throw that out there so they know who we're talking about. That's right. Well, Greg was a member of Red Cross. Greg was from Hawthorne, which is also part of the South Bay. Sure. The the McDonald brothers are also from Hawthorne. So are the Beach Boys, so it all makes perfect sense. We should yeah. just all form a band and sing harmonies. Um, <laughs> totally. The, 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 the thing with the Circle Jerks, the seeds were planted with the Circle Jerks when the McDonald brothers decided that they were, they wanted to be a band, but they didn't want to do all of the work that was necessary to be a band. Hmm. I mean, maybe songwriting, yes, but like all of the rehearsing, which I, I can appreciate that because the, the the Red Cross band they've always had this up until lately they they've always had this real loose just like the New York Dolls if you listen to the New York Dolls what do they practice once a year yeah <laughs> you know they're getting ready to record an album when they get together for six hours to write the songs and another six hours to record the record and, right you know. I mean, and then I'm not dissing the New York Dolls because I love the New York Dolls. Which is amazing in a way to do it that quick. But, but you know, I'm someone who wants to practice all the time and make sure we know our stuff, and period. Plus, I love doing it. it it's my therapy as well. Well, so I I'm like that, that because of what happened with Black Flag. Right. It's like, I want to, like, play these songs till they just bore us to tears. And then we're looking at each other, and it's like, well, we don't want to play these songs anymore. And it's normally you look at bands, and bands are like, Oh no, we we got to write a new batch of songs because we're just we're bored with these songs, and it's like some of these some of these bands are bands that haven't been out playing a lot. Now, did, did anything? Did you? Was there anything you did it with the Circle Jerks you did differently from Black Flag as far as that stuff goes, or were you still just like I'm still hungry for this? I still want to just play my tunes and do it our way, and that's why I want to do another band. You know? Well, what was happening was that. For the circle jerks, things started to happen quicker. 
than for Black Flag. Because in Black Flag, we were just kind of feeling our way through all of this stuff. Sure. You know, where can we play? Well, nobody wants us to play, so we're going to have to uh, rent, the, rent the Moose Lodge. Uh, we're going to have to throw a teen dance party. Um, we're going to have to play in somebody's backyard. I mean, I still, to this day, love playing in garages and backyards and yeah. basements, people's living rooms. I know. Me there's too. A, there's a certain energy. There's a certain cool quality about that. Like, we're not so big that we can't just pull up and jump out and, oh, there's some kids playing in the backyard. It's like, hey, can we, can we like, play 15, 20 minutes on your equipment? You know, it's like, wow, sure, okay. Yeah. Um, we had no idea what we were doing. Sure. It was just like, maybe what it was was, let's, let, let's take this pot and just start stirring it up and we'll start adding these, these ingredients. Frustration. Nerdy geeks, can't get laid, ugly girlfriends, too much beer, not enough beer, doing drugs, community hates you, get the fuck out of here, what are you doing? Start stirring that up, All okay. Right. Um, can't pay my bills, um, flat tire today, parking ticket, let's, just, let's stir yeah. it up some more, <laughs> um, you know. That's what it turns into. Sure, the bubbling cauldron of life. <laughs> and that's what creates the music. So we've we've concocted this fucking gloppy goo gunk gorpy whatever gorpy. it is. <laughs> and if you can hear what's going on in the background, let's toss some of that in there because the police were constantly on our tip. Sure. And for, for what reason, I don't really know. It's like they thought that maybe we were some subversive terrorist organization. And, you know, the only thing we wanted to blow up was whatever room we were in. Yeah, we, yeah. like, crank the equipment and hit notes, you know? Totally. Well, but, nobody, but the cops, well, authority has never understood that, but especially back then, authority didn't understand that. Like, so. You know. I've seen the tattoo that says FTW, right? And that's fuck the world, you know. Yep. I know the feeling. I just had. Let's see. Just the other day, my motorcycle broke down on me. Two checks bounced that day, and then I got a two hundred nineteen dollar uh, ticket in the mail, and all you, in one day. And you felt so. like Bruce Lee, and you wanted to go out and just slug oh. somebody in the face. It, it, the, the first person that you saw. Him. If, if I didn't bring myself back down, I would have leveled my whole house. I would have raised my house to the ground. Everything would have been destroyed. So I just found this little place and just went, I'm just going to sit down for a minute and just breathe. <laughs> well, that, but when I was younger, wouldn't that be called meditating? Sort of. It wasn't quite yeah. meditation, but when I was younger, I didn't know how to do that. And that's why I was in bands that did exactly what you were talking about in the early days, just going out there and just wanting to just destroy what you were doing at that moment. What would be the big difference between Black Flag and the Circle Jerks? Black Flag encouraged that, didn't pay attention to that, just all anarchy, hope it all falls apart, blow, blow everything up. The Circle Jerks wanted to take all of that energy and turn it into a party. Like, yeah. You know, the, the girls started to get, the, the, all of a sudden there's a few more girls coming to the shows. You know, it's not just a bunch of like geeky guys and, you know, guys beating each other up and right. punk rock jocks and all of that Some kind of stuff. Some estrogen started bouncing yeah. out the so uh, testosterone crowd. All of a sudden crowd. there were a few girls that were coming to the party. Yep. And so you guys wanted to party. <laughs> so we wanted to party. I don't blame you. <laughs> we, we've waited all week. It's Friday night. Let's party. All right. So now your new band off. Tell me about it. That would be um, capital O, capital F, capital F. All right. Exclamation mark. Okay. So uh, a lot of people are going to say, well, black flag was a bug spray. Off is a bug spray. Oh, no. Black flag wasn't a bug spray. Black flag was a flag of anarchy and piracy yeah. and do what you want and don't 
conform to all of their rules. I mean, there's a few rules that are good that we got to live by, but sure. I think that's just morality, yeah. I guess. You know, um, off basically um, rose up out of a really what I would say, what I would call a pathetic, um, pathetic situation. Um, we were originally working on a new Circle Jerks album, the first Circle Jerks album in about 14 years. Yeah, no kidding, wow. And we were about two weeks away from going into the studio to lay down some tracks. Let's go in and let's blow up. Let's, this isn't gonna be some month long thing where we're gonna do triple guitar overdubs and Oh, that symbol doesn't sound right. We're going to need to go back and re-record that symbol. We weren't going to be doing any of that. The idea was to like go in on a Friday and leave on Monday with everything mixed and ready to go. Wow. And everybody was on board for that, Greg? Well, no. That, see, what happened was the word went out because Greg said, well, Bad Religion's going on the Warp Tour. We've got to record the record before I leave on the, on the Warp Tour. Okay. So now all of a sudden, it's all based on his Bad Religion schedule. See, and the beauty of Off is that we're a new band, and I don't have to, I, I don't have my life dictated to me by another band. Sure. So Which is, that's a beautiful thing. So that's it's what we're getting to, is that, is that the Circle Jerks th turned, it, the, the new album turned into off because of that. Because you're like, I just want to get this record done, I want to go out and play, I want to have fun, do my craft. Well. Without having to wait on another band. We, we have a producer who is uh, cracking the whip. Ah. A younger guy who's like, no. The, 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 the song that you brought to the rehearsal space, it's not good enough to be on a Circle Jerks record. So all of a sudden, feelings are being hurt. So he's basically, and I really love this, become a bit of a dictator. And there's nothing wrong with that. See, we've always been the guys that have just done whatever we felt like doing. Sure. As all of this progresses along it's like all of these excuses are coming up like well no he's arrogant uh he's egotistical uh he's overbearing and in the process i'm learning more and more about the guys that i've been playing in this band with and it's like you know what i'm really soured on this whole situation so it's kind of a combination of a lot of things that sort of stopped it in its tracks um, I actually got a phone call from one of the guys and he said, you know, we know that you're going to quit be based on our decision, but we're, we're firing Dimitri. And I said, you know what? You're right. I didn't do all of this work for a Circle Jerks album to have you tell me that, you know, you don't like the songs or, you know, one day you like the song, the next day you don't. And, you know, these guys are, they're making all of these excuses. They're pointing these fingers at him. And now all of a sudden we're working with a guy who's an amazing songwriter. He's recorded and produced records of his own. I'd worked with him in the past. That's the reason why I was gung-ho and totally out of my mind with excitement. And two weeks before we were supposed to go in and record, they just said, well, we don't want to work with Dimitri. And you know, I, I don't need all of that. I just, you know, I was focused on writing these songs. And that's where Off came from. Do you, this is a hard question, do you think there's a, a defining LA sound? You know, it, it's such an eclectic place. I know it's such a weird question, but is there an LA sound? Is there, some, is there something that's just born here, you know? Um, my answer to that question would be probably a very large no when it comes to an L.A. sound because of the makeup of the city, because there are so many different people, so many different cultures. Sure. It, it, I don't really hear a definite defining L.A. sound, no. I mean, it, 
I guess what I would do is I would use the, what I call the second wave of LA punk mm -hmm. as an example, where you had the bags, you had the eyes, you had the dickies, you had fear, you had the germs, you had the flesh eaters, screamers, weirdos. Sure. controllers if you listen to all of those bands they all sound different they all have their own personalities there's it's not a horizontal thing sure and because of that there was no defining sound i mean maybe it was energetic maybe it was angry maybe it was sped up maybe it was amped up maybe it was caffeined up right yeah, or just maybe under it's the because we live on the, maybe because we live close to all of these roads and streets and alleyways and then all of a sudden you got the freeway you know and you got the helicopters flying overhead <laughs> lots of zigzagging and you got LAX you know <laughs> yep. it's like it, it sped up uh, maybe that could be part of the defining LA sound I don't know I I, I I think I would just be reaching and that would be, I would be yeah. grasping at it's something It's almost there. like th there's points about this city that cause bands to do a certain thing, you know? You know we what didn't, I mean? We didn't have any punk rock bands come out of Laurel Canyon. There you go. And that's a whole different feeling right there. It's you in know, Los that, Angeles. That whole but, Laurel you know. Canyon feeling like love and the birds and yep. even Frank Zappa and Buffalo Springfield. Doesn't I mean, that's going, back, that's going back to the 60s, but. You know, no, it, it probably because everything's so spread out and I, I guess th that would probably be a, a, a good way of, if there is an LA sound, it's not a definitive sound, it's spread out because of the suburbs and you got the South Bay and you got the Valley and you know, somebody lives up on a hill and somebody lives next to a landfill and... Right. And that is, that's the sound. Could very well be. So speaking of sounds, want to go play a song? No. Oh, come on. Troublemakers. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
That was fucking awesome. <laughs> that was.